Iron Guazi is the new for 2022 Hyper Hybrid Coaster located at Busch Gardens Tampa Bay. Iron Guazi is the most recent hybrid coaster to open from manufacturer Rocky Mountain Construction and is the company's tallest, fastest, and steepest coaster. Standing at a max height of 206 feet, reaching a top speed of 76 miles an hour, and spanning 4,075 feet of track, it drops riders at a 91 degree angle. Before we take a ride on the revamped Guazi, let's take a look at our off-ride presentation. As soon as you are walking to the front entrance of the park, Iron Guazi is able to be seen looming over the park, and when I say it towers over everything else, I mean it because of the way it is positioned in the park. It looks massive compared to the surrounding rides. When you enter the park, depending on which path you take, Iron Guazi will be the first ride you pass, and it makes one bold first impression. The ride station is placed on top of a hill as well as set back a substantial amount from the main path. On the front of the station sits the ride's massive logo, which looks absolutely incredible, not only in the day, but at night as well. Located right next to the station is the coaster's massive lift hill, and going over top of the station is the wave turn, both of which gives the ride station and a plaza a great sense of movement. Overall, I'll give Iron Guazi a 9 out of 10 for presentation. I'm going to quickly touch on the queue line and what it's like to wait in. So, to even enter the queue, you must walk slightly down the pathway and enter a mini plaza for the ride. This is where you will find the lockers and the queue line's entrance. Now, literally the moment you enter the queue, you will encounter the first of two cattle pens. But don't worry, this one isn't super long. The middle section of the queue is just a winding pathway that slopes upwards during the latter half. And to be completely honest, this section looks really nice, going under and even over the pre-lift section of the ride. The final section of the queue is a second cattle pin, but just like the first one, it is shaded and isn't terrible to wait in. Overall, I will give the queue line a 7 out of 10. Now, let's take our seat and go on the ride of this beast of a coaster. You run to the station through a left-hand turn, which leads into the ride's short yet thrilling pre-lift. The pre-lift begins with a small twisting drop that when in the back rows will give a small and abrupt pop of ejector airtime. The drop sharply turns to the left throughout, but it has an awkward kink in the turn which gives a strange burst of laterals before entering the 45 degree lift hill. Once you reach the top of the lift, it will slow the train down to a near crawl but because of this, you will get dangled over the drop if you're in the front of the train. Next up is probably the best drop on an RMC coaster, this 91 degree, 206 foot drop. No matter where you sit in the train, you will get sustained ejector airtime, but where this drop really shines is in the back row, because you will get completely thrown out of your seat and you won't land back in your seat until you hit the pullout which is absolutely the most intense moment of positive G-Fars on any RMC. The pullout twists back and forth under the structure of the elements later in the ride, before rising up into the massive outer bank turn. The entrance to the outer bank has some supports going over the top of the track, giving one of the best head choppers I've experienced. And right after the head choppers, you rapidly twist outwards and get ejected out of your seat. The combination of laterals and ejector airtime on its own would be crazy. But when mixed with having support structure above you and how fast it transitions from positive to negative forces makes this tied for my favorite moment on the ride. The drop off the outer bank is very similar to the entrance, only it is better in the back row. The pullout after dips back under the first drop before pulling up into a barrel roll down drop, properly named the death roll. Now, if you have been on a coaster like Storm Chaser or Twisted Timbers, you might have an idea of how it feels, but on Iron Gwazi, instead of going through it slowly, you absolutely fly through the death roll. When in the back car of the train, you get absolutely thrown out of your seat with what I can only describe as ejector hang time, which is absolutely terrifying. Next up is what I believe to be the most surprising element of the ride, and is the overbank turn. 
Now, when I first saw Gwazi's layout, I assumed that this would be a dud element, but I was beyond mistaken. The train takes this turn with so much speed that on some of my midday rides, I felt my vision start to fade slightly. Not only that, but right after you feel the positive G's, you will be ejected from your seat with one of the most intense and aggressive pops of lateral airtime on any coaster. This moment is so abrupt and powerful to the point where at night, it feels like you're going to be thrown across a park. And I know it's not for everyone, but I loved it. Now for the other element that is tied for my favorite on the ride, the Outer Banked Wave Turn. Now, I just recently got to ride Lightning Rod at Dollywood for the first time, so I'm going to be drawing a lot of comparisons to that ride and try to explain the sheer insanity of Iron Gwazi's Wave Turn. Now, right off the bat, I want to say that Lightning Rod's Wave Turn is way more sustained, but Iron Gwazi is undeniably more aggressive and intense. For example, Lightning Rod's Wave Turn is a lot taller than Gwazi, as well as it being a lot more drawn out and floaty, whereas on Gwazi, it is trying to throw you across the park. I think the best example to show you how much more intense Gwazi's Wave Turn is than Lightning Rod's is by looking at the shaping of the elements. Now, just by looking at the entrance into the Wave Turn, you can see the difference in power. While Elrod has a gradual and gentle upwards twist into the 90 degree bank, Gwazi wastes no time whipping you outwards to the 90 degree angle. So in the time that it takes for Elrod to fully bank 90 degrees, Iron Gwazi is already halfway through the wave turn without losing any speed. Without spending any more time on this because this video is getting really long, the wave turn is beyond ridiculous and lives up to all the hype. I mean, just look at my reaction. Oh my god. After another head chopper exiting the wave turn, you hit a twisted step up, which delivers a fantastic moment of lateral ejector airtime. That is followed up with another smaller wave turn, which is more similar to the one during the elevated turnaround on Steel Vengeance. While this wave turn is nowhere near as intense as the first one, it is still a fun and rapid fire element. Without wasting a beat, Gwazi whips you into the second and final inversion, a zero G stall. The stall itself doesn't really offer any hang time, but it offers a cool visual of being inverted over top the pullout of the first drop. Exiting the stall, you will get absolutely whipped if you are in the back car, but you hardly get a chance to breathe before you are flung into your lap bar with what might just be the most powerful moment of airtime I have ever experienced. But wait, there is even more powerful ejector airtime coming up here, and the next two moments come in the form of this almost trick track element of sorts. Now, this isn't like the trick track element on Twisted Timbers, where it takes the form of a double up. The one on Iron Gwazi, both of the hills are on the same level, so it makes it feel a lot different, but one thing that stays the same is the insane airtime on the second hill. When you combine this with the twisted step up and the twisted bunny hops, as well as the final element of the ride, you get one of the best coaster finales on any ride ever. Speaking of the final big element, it is a large drop which comes out of nowhere and flings you out of your seat one last time before you whip into the brake run with a low and fast turn, delivering one last burst of laterals as well as a nice head chopper before you slam to a stop on the final brake run. Overall, I love this layout so much. Obviously, I'm giving the right layout a perfect 10 out of 10. The last thing I'm going to touch on is the overall train design and how comfortable it is to ride. Now, I know that some people don't like RMC trains, but I think they are rather comfortable to ride in. They also have some nice room because of the shin guards allow you to get good airtime. Some people might see the ride's wooden support structure and worry about it being rough, but Iron Gwazi is probably one of, if not the smoothest coasters I have ever ridden. So the comfort category gets a 9 out of 10. Iron Gwazi's statistical final score comes out to an 8.8 .8 out of 10. 
My personal score is going to be a perfect 10 out of 10, making this one of my favorite coasters overall. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It's free and you can unsubscribe at any time. I'll see you next week for a brand new video. God, I love it when I read scripts at like 10 o'clock at night and the script is like over a thousand words long and it's just four giant paragraphs. It's my favorite evening activity. Oh, end me!